Today, we're going to be looking at one of the most stunning and unique looking cactus varieties out there. The Santa Rita Prickly Pear, also known as Apuntia Santa Rita, or Santa Rita Nopal. If you've ever wanted a cactus that looks like it belongs on an alien planet, this one might be for you. So what makes it special? Well, first off, the color. The pads of Santa Rita often take on this gorgeous purple hue, especially in colder weather or when it's under a little bit of stress. And unlike some prickly pears that look a bit scrappy, this one grows in a beautifully tiered, upright shape that makes it a great landscaping piece or stand out in a pot. Let's talk about its growth habits. Santa Rita is a medium to large growing Apuntia. In ideal conditions, it can reach about five to six feet tall and just as wide. Although in pots, it'll stay much more compact. Each pad can be around five to seven inches across and it branches nicely if you prune it or if it's growing strong. Like most prickly pears, it propagates easily. Snap or cut off a pad, let it callus, and root it in dry, well-draining soil. Speaking of soil, what kind does it like? This cactus is native to the American Southwest and Northern Mexico, so it is used to harsh, rocky soils and drought. Your best bet is a cactus mix or sandy loam with lots of drainage. If it holds water too long, you're going to get rot especially during the cooler months. Now let's talk about water. Here's the cool part. Santa Rita is extremely drought tolerant. Once it's established, it can go weeks or months without water. If you're growing in pots, water deeply and let it dry out completely between waterings. In the ground, you can forget about it most of the year once it's matured especially if you get the occasional rain in your area. That said, you'll get better color and growth with occasional watering during the growing seasons. All right, so what about sunlight? This cactus loves full sun. Six or more hours of direct light per day will bring out those purple pads and keep the plant compact and sturdy. If you're growing it indoors or in low light, the color will fade a little bit and it can get leggy. Outside in a bright, hot climate, it'll thrive. Let's cover the temperature range next. Santa Rita is hardy to about 15 degrees or nine, negative nine Celsius once established. Though young plants might need protection if you're expecting a deep freeze. If you're in USDA zones eight through 11, you can grow this outside year round. In colder areas, treat it like a container cactus bring it in during the winter, or overwinter it in a greenhouse. This cactus blooms in spring to early summer with vibrant yellow flowers, sometimes tinged with red. The contrast between those flowers and the purple pads is surreal. After that, it might produce small edible fruits, though Santa Rita isn't typically grown for fruit production. If you're worried about maintenance, it's super easy. You can prune pads to shape it, propagate, or keep the size manageable. It doesn't need fertilizer often, maybe a half strength cactus fertilizer once or twice during the growing season, but that's it. Pests are rare, though you might see the occasional scale or insect that look like a white fuzz. Just spray them off with water, or you can use rubbing alcohol. And if you're wondering, yes, this is one of the varieties I grow and sell myself. So if you're looking to get your hands on some healthy cuttings, check out my website. I've got Santa Rita and other unique succulents available and ready to ship. So to recap, Santa Rita Prickly Pear is a cold hardy, drought tolerant, purple hued, cactus that adds instant character to your garden or container setup. It's low maintenance, striking to look at, and easy to propagate. Whether you're into landscaping, xeriscaping, or just building your cactus collection, this one definitely deserves a spot. Thanks for watching, 
and if this guide helps you out, consider liking the video and subscribing for more plant care deep dives like this. I cover everything from aquatic plants to desert groves, and there's always something new in the works. I'll see you in the next one.